Hey guys, here we go into Terrence Crawford versus Julius Sandango in preparation for Jeff Horn versus Terrence Crawford. Um, it's going to be a good fight. I hope you guys are excited. Uh, this is going to be kind of a, a linear film study, and we're not going to talk about all the skills that Crawford has. We're going to use the ones that he talks or that he uses in this fight. And the reason I chose this fight is because Julius Sandango has a very similar uh, a style, like attacking style, offensive style, as Jeff Horn, in that he likes to step with his jab um, and step with his offense to close the distance. But while he's on the outside, he's not um, uh, he's not throwing punches or like he's not setting stuff up from the outside. But it's all like a step inside where he closes the distance and then looks to um, start setting up his offense um, after. But it all starts with a step and closing the distance. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it now. Right away, what do we want to notice about Bud? Um, he's controlling the space with, uh, you know, an active guard, right? Coming back and forward, right? Getting fainted a little bit right there. Um, but, whoops. Looking to counter or to catch and counter, right? You can see right away. Um, he can, he's trying to time that right hook. Um, and, oh, and another reason I chose this, they're both fighting southpaw, which means that they'll both, um, it's the same exact dynamic as it'll be when they're both right-handed um, versus uh, Jeff Horn. But um, Crawford is not really controlling the space between them um, like, you, like he usually does with his lead hand. He's kind of bouncing back and forth on the same, hoping to get on the same rhythm as Julius Ndongo. And we'll talk about this later. But as you can see, um, waiting for Ndongo to, to make an attack, right? He's not controlling the space and trying to stop him from uh, letting off his offense. He's kind of inviting him in uh, because this is a tactic that, that uh, Crawford definitely has. Um, the ability to control the space with his lead hand, um, but he's not using it in this fight because he wants Indongo to come in. He already knows, as you can see right here, you can, he already knows that Indongo is looking to uh, flash the lead hand, uh, step forward, and then throw a left hand. Um, so all he wants to do is kind of bait him and walk him into it. Um, and as you can see, Crawford is having a very passive round. You know, he's thrown three jabs. That was the third jab, um, but not a lot of not a lot of movement. Now, one thing I want to talk about is that he's still moving his head, you know. Um, even though he's on the line with his opponent, right, and they're not really at range, uh, he's and he's not trying to control the space between them. He doesn't want to give his opponent an easy target, right? So he just wants to move his head a little bit, keep his opponent guessing, because if he does get complacent, um, and Dongo can still land a great shot on him uh, if he catches him off rhythm or when he's, like, you know, not ready at all. Um, so he wants to maintain some activity. And boom, we see it right here, right? He's trying to follow Ndongo back with the shot. He rolls that shot beautifully. Boom. Now, this is a very difficult uh, style of offense to have. Um, it's very difficult, but it's also very dangerous, too. Um, because if your opponent faints you, and they say this, this shot right here wasn't a, a real right hand or a left hand from Ndongo, he, got, he just got Crawford to dip all this way, right? And now say he didn't transition all his weight into that left hand. And instead, he fainted, right, and then got Crawford to flip into that position. He could come back with the le uh, right hook instead. But he catches him with a beautiful hook right there and really throws uh, Ndongo off balance. But notice that Crawford is not doing a lot to control the space between them. And right here, he actually really pays for it. Boom, right? That punch comes, right? Boom. And this is actually exactly what I was just talking about. Um, Ndongo throws the right hand. And then catches him with, or the left hand, and then catches him with the right hook. Um, and uh, because you know, Indongo's not ready for it, or he's not looking for enough information from his opponent. And now here's another problem with this style of offense, right? Is uh, Indongo still able to get his offense off when he wants to? Um, and Crawford is not going to be in position to counter every single punch. It's just it's just not always feasible because he has no control over Ndongo. So Ndongo, when, whenever Ndongo is ready to throw punches, um, Crawford has to be ready to counter them. But as you can see, he's not, and he kind of eats a body shot. It's low, right? But even if it wasn't low, it still could have landed. Um, good job right there from Crawford, right? Fainting, fainting, getting um, Ndongo out of position. Ndongo ducks down from the double jab, and he misses that shot. But what does, Indong what does Jul um, Crawford do? He controls Indongo to prevent any counters from coming back. 
uh, really smart defense right there. And that's what you call defense, when you're out of position, how you defend yourself. Um, if you're in position and your opponent throws a 1-2-3 at you and you're here and you can't block that, you shouldn't be fighting. Straight up. That's not, this is not defense, boom, 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 right? That's not defense, that's common sense. Someone's throwing punches at you. Um, get out of the way, because they hurt. Um, moving on. Again, drawing Ndongo in, right? He's not looking to control the space, because he wants Ndongo to come in so he can follow him back with those shots. Like right there, you can see he's not controlling the space, but Ndongo comes forward with that flashing lead hand, and he starts following him back with the jabs, looking to take advantage of the fact that in a previous film study I've done on Ndongo, Ndongo doesn't do very well moving backwards. Um, and he has a very difficult time punching. He does a decent job right here of planting himself after um, and catching Crawford, but not like it's not a very common thing for him. And again, right, Ndongo faints forward, and what does Crawford do? Follows him back. Now, this is very similar to how I think that Crawford is going to want to fight Horn because of that in and out style. Um, as you can see, uh, Indongo steps forward, right? And then he, as he's stepping back off of the feint, even on his feints he moves forward, um, Crawford's able to catch him. And incidentally, if any of you guys have seen my film study on Sergei de uh he has a very similar style where he steps with his feints as well. And I think that Golovkin really might be able to take advantage of that, just like Crawford is doing right here. <clears throat> Again, right, faint comes, and what does Crawford do? Boom. He ducks his shoulder, right? He's like, okay, I'm waiting for that, that left hand. Bring me that left hand. Show me that left hand. Here it comes, and he turns away from it and takes a step back, you know, not ready to counter. And one of the reasons why he's having a hard time, because he's not controlling the space, right? He's not dictating to Indongo when he's allowed to throw punches, and he's allowing Indongo to use the feints, right? Now, this might be a... Um, a learning curve for Crawford in this fight because notice it does take him three rounds to win this fight. Um, he does do it by landing like a, a beautiful shot, but um, but it takes him three rounds to finally get the timing and start landing shots, but also to change it up and go to the body rather than go to the head. Boom. Again, beautiful, right? So uh, Ndongo flashes the lead hand, flashes the lead hand, takes the step, shoots the left hand, and Crawford pulls back just enough to counter him and lands a great counter shot. But again, all of his offense so far has been baiting uh, Ndongo to come on the inside. Now, this might be a little more difficult, and we'll talk about that in the full breakdown of the fight, um, or the full skills breakdown uh, tomorrow when we, when we go over specific clips and why some of this may be uh, more difficult against Jeff Horn than it is against Julius Ndongo. But some good feints from Crawford. Uh, again, he's not controlling the space with his lead hand, uh, but he's doing a good job of moving his head and controlling Ndongo a little bit. But he, again, he wants to invite Ndongo in because that's where his, most of his offense is coming from, is from countering him. Again, look at how he's slipping this way, slipping that way, right? And then that jab comes and he slips to the, outs or to the, uh, to the outside, right? He might have been able to follow that back if he was a little quicker. <clears throat> do, do, do. And I want to say, like, if you look at Ndongo's style, right, he's doing a good job with his feints. Um, fainting, ducking down, go, look, fainting to the body, fainting in, fainting again, fainting, and just trying to get a reaction from Crawford. And because Crawford is the one that's waiting, and we'll talk about this more, um, it's, it's, He's the one that's basically in control of Crawford. All he has to do is wait for the, the feints to stop working um, and Crawford not to respond and then actually come in with the shot. As you can see here, boom, he lands that left hand right over the top uh, because Crawford's not ready. You know, he gives him so many feints with the lead hand, right? Crawford wasn't ready for the left hand to come over the top um, and winds up catching him with a good shot. Whoops. No, I don't want sticky keys. Get out of here. Um, anyway, now aside from that, uh, Crawford has had a very same, similar basic offense as well. Flash the lead hand and then go over the top when, when Indongo ducks down, right? He puts himself really out of position, and Crawford's not really having a very difficult time getting him out of position either. 
Moving on. A lot of fainting, a lot of fainting. Uh, but as you can see, you know, Crawford's really not doing his, his best to control Ndongo because his main source of offense for this fight are the counter punches. He wants Ndongo to be the one to come in. Now, next round, same thing, right? Oh, and we're going to get to see this counter, right? Beautiful, right? Watching the slow-mo. I'm not watching the regular film yet, so hold on. Um, whoops. But controls him a little bit with the lead hand, sees that it's going to be a feint from Ndongo, gets just out of the way of it, and lands a great right hook um, on Ndongo. And again, that's his whole strategy for this fight. Now, he also does a decent job after of controlling him with his forearm right there so he can get out of the way. Um, decent. You know, he could have done better. He could have leaned in there um, and kept his head a little, his, and his body a little closer to Ndongo, so that shot had no chance to land. But, you know, he still didn't get hit by it. A good job of moving off the line, which is going to be very important when he fights Horn. Now, again, uh, flashing the lead hand, boom, and he's able to go to the body and land a shot against Crawford right here. Boom. Um, and almost a free shot, you know, because Crawford is not looking to counter the body shots. He's looking to counter the head shots. And again, that left hand comes over the top. What does he do? Catches him with his lead hand. You know, that one's more like a cross than a, a left hook or then a right hook or a jab, right? A cross kind of just, you know, boom, you know, rather than a straight punch or a, a dynamic hook. But looking to punish him for uh, every time he throws a left hand to the head and get him to reach for it. <clears throat> Moving on. And again, Crawford not really uh, controlling the distance, right? Allowing Croft, uh, allowing. Julius and Dongo to throw punches kind of whenever he wants to because, again, it's part of his strategy to take advantage of that in-and-out style. You know, um, obviously, he's a two-time world champion. He's a two-time world champion, so um, uh, it's a little more difficult to, you know, just straight up knock him out than he probably thought it was, um, even though, you know, he can kind of figure that he's going to. But here we go, um, going forward and following him back when he does commit to his jab. Right? So there are two different timings for Julius and Dongo. There's the one where he's just fainting, right? And then there's the one where he commits to his jab. And we haven't really talked about that because the film study is supposed to be about Crawford. Um, but as you can see here, just fainting, right? But this one, uh, Crawford or Ndongo actually shot his jab. And Crawford is picking up on that timing as well and how it differs from, um, from the, the fainted jab. Ugh. Excuse me while I stretch. <clears throat> but uh, again, uh, another thing to note, you know, Crawford's not very active. You know, he's very, very, very reactive. And we're going to talk more about that in tomorrow's video. Um, I just want to get through the rest of this round and um, and the final round as well. Uh, as we all know, Julius Ndongo goes out in the next round. Um, but again, Crawford, boom. Now, this is really interesting. Um, so, uh, Crawford is picking up on the timing of the feint, right? And trying to counter him, right? But what happens in this instance, he feints him like he's going to shoot the jab, but Julius Ndongo uses head movement to slip the shot. Crawford misses barely and then gets clocked kinda by Julius Ndongo's, uh, left hand. And as you can see, it, it doesn't hit him super hard, right? But... Crawford is able to come back, boom, with his own great right hook right there. Look at his technique, too, you guys. Look at this technique, man. Perfect. Almost perfect. Like, for for the... It's just phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Like, to get any better than this, it would be basically like you'd have to be hitting punch mitts. Um, but to do it in a fight is very difficult. Now, he lands this big shot, right? What does Julius Ndongo do? Shoves him off, you know, shows some physicality. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that again tomorrow in tomorrow's breakdown and how that kind of affects the fight. Julius Ndongo going to the head this time, and instead of going in front of him, right, and aiming for the chin, starts aiming kind of for the back of the head, right? And then Crawford has no opportunity here to counter because Julius Ndongo immediately ties him up. We'll talk about that again uh, in tomorrow's video and how that affects the fight. 
Um, but smart control from, from Julius Ndongo right there and not getting countered. Again, Crawford looking to take away that um, that committed jab. Now, that's going to be really interesting, uh, and we're going to do some more film study on Jeff Horn. I'll do it personally before I do Keys to Victory. Um, but I'm going to do some more film study on it to see if there's a difference between Jeff Horn's feints and Jeff Horn's uh, committed jab um, because that looks like exactly what Crawford is picking up on now is that he can kind of figure out when... Um, when Julius Ndongo is fainting his jab and when he's actually committing to it, and that's what he's looking to take away. Now, right here, again, you know, he's inviting him in um, off of the, the probing or the fainting of uh, Julius Ndongo. Um, and Julius Ndongo, notice, when he throws this left hand, right, and that's where the faint comes, or this, yeah, this left hand, he still steps with his lead leg, right, to close the distance. Um, whoops, I missed it. But watch his lead foot right here. He still steps with it and then throws the left hand, and Crawford is still able to kind of come back and barely misses him with that shot and then lands a shot to the body. But at this point in the fight, this is where he throws his first body shot and really hurts um, Ndongo uh, and then hits him with another body shot right there. Beautiful shot, but shoots that one too. Um, but uh, Julius Ndongo doesn't move off the line very effectively because he uses a roll instead. Uh, Jeff Horn's not going to have that problem. Winds up getting caught with that right hook to the body and then walks into this straight left hand. And again, the reason that this is so easy for him is because Julius Ndongo is not used to fighting on the back foot. Again, he's really bad at it. Um, and as you can see, every time the one the jab jab comes out, Julius Ndongo's like, hook, hook, and then he ducks all the way down and puts his head in the same spot and Crawford's able to find him right there, uh, easily picking up on that pattern of his. Um, and that'll be an interesting wrinkle when we talk tomorrow about patterns because Gary Corcoran was able to pick up on Jeff Horn's pattern so easily uh, that in the first, at, by the end of the first round, he was able to, to start mitigating Jeff Horn's offense and Jeff Horn's offensive style. So I think that Crawford is going to be able to do something very similar. Um, and then it's going to be kind of a case of whether or not... Um, Jeff Horn, you know, it gets into a real boxing match, you know, once that kind of stuff gets taken away. Um, um, and they have to use their skills rather than their gimmicks. Again, uh, flashing the lead hand, right? Trying to shoot that straight left. And Crawford going to the head, trying to follow him back with that, with his own straight left hand. Boom. Ooh, fainting, fainting. Now, it's interesting because uh, I don't know why Crawford would throw this hook. I think he's trying to time him into, like, walking into that shot, like, walking into it perfectly. But um, he does know that Julius Ndongo is going to be ducking his head, and that's his only form of defense. Um, so I'm not sure why Crawford would try to do that. You know what I mean? It was, like, you know, just barely missed. But, again, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of offense um, – Indongo uses if he's just straight ducking like that. He's going to get away from those first shots um, or the 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 right hands, right? Um, the left hand, the one that crosses your body into that zone, naturally is going to be the one that's much more effective and much more much easier to land. Now we're not going to look at the replay of that just because uh, I want to get through this last round, uh, but I want to talk about the flow of the fight, right? Now Crawford is winning the fight. He just got a knockdown in the last round, um, and He's pressing, right? But notice he's not controlling the space necessarily with his feint or with his probes, right? He's not really looking to set punches up, right? As you can see, he can put pressure on him. But this is 30 seconds into round two. He's really not looking to control the space between him and, and Ndongo still. He still wants Ndongo to be the one to come to him. Um, ooh, good shot from Ndongo following him back. It doesn't make, it doesn't land, right? But Indongo showing that he's very smart too. You know, he's a little flawed in his technique sometimes, and he would do well to get a new trainer. Um, I would really like to see him work with a, an American coach. Great shot right there. Faints him, boom, or um, shoots that jab. Crawford knows that he's trying to counter the jab now, so he pulls back, right, gets completely away, and Indongo kind of stops in his track. Oh, he's too far. And Crawford follows him back. That kind of harkens back to that last one where he tried to land that straight right hand. Um, let's actually go ahead and back and look at that because it's really interesting. Where is it? 
do do. Where is it? Did I miss it already? Oh, is it right here? Yeah. So he shoots the jab, and then follow, and then Indongo follows him back. Oh God, it was like literally two seconds ago. Um, and then he shoots the jab here, knowing that Indongo is trying to counter him, and then follows back preemptively getting away from the left-hand counter and then following him back with his own counter. Beautifully set up. Uh, Crawford, very, very smart fighter, you guys. Um, and I didn't talk about this yet, but I actually think even though Crawford is on most people's top 10 pound-for-pound pound list, I think Crawford is grossly underrated. I don't think people even understand how good of a fighter he is. Um, the fact that he can do all this uh, left-handed and right-handed is just phenomenal. Um but this is really interesting. So Ndongo, fainting a lot, right? Flashes the lead hand, goes to the body, right? Lands on the, the waistband of the trunks. Not a great shot. But then he's able to follow up. And because of the fact that Crawford is being reactive, um, he's not in position to counter. And he kind of gets walked into those shots. Again, a product of him not controlling the space between him and his opponent um, and allowing Ndongo to kind of do what he wants because he wants to invite him in. Now, I'm just going to kind of gloss over, and we're going to talk about, I think it's it's coming up. Yeah, it's right here. Um, boom. Beautiful shot from Crawford. Um, so Ndongo's fainting, fainting, flashes the lead hand, and Crawford times it perfectly, taking a step back. Perfect, on the perfect rhythm, right? Oops. So follows him back perfectly, takes a step back, just as the left hand is coming. Misses with the left hook or the right hook, but then comes back with the body shot while he's out of position. Boom. Lands a great shot. And then, you know, kind of icing on the cake on that second one, but lands another great shot. But again, Crawford was a little subdued in this fight. You know, we can tell. We know Crawford has more skills than this, but um, um, but he didn't show a lot of them, you know. Uh he, number one, he didn't switch to a right-handed stance at all, right? Which is fine. Uh, but he wasn't controlling the space with his lead hand like he normally does. Like, boom, changing levels, pressing forward, probing with his right hand and his left hand. Um, there were a lot of things that he really didn't do in this fight because he wants to bait his opponent in. Now, this is exactly how I think that he's going to fight Jeff Horn. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow when I talk about the skills assessment for this style of fighting. But we're also going to – I'm going to bring in some film against um, – uh, Diaz uh, to kind of talk and demonstrate that this is not the only way that Crawford knows how to fight um, and that he'll have opportunities to make adjustments um, uh, after that. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks, guys.